about a year ago now, to be honest, uh, David, one of my followers on Instagram, one of my very early followers, uh, messaged me saying, would you be interested in some free parts? Naturally, I said yes. That ranged from uh, wheels, uh, forks, handlebars, derail like all sorts of stuff, and a couple of nice frames. In particular, this one here, the Dynamax one. Dynamax, Dynamix. This one. So I decided to build a mock-up, uh, wheels, saddle, handlebars, just to kind of like gauge what the bike would look like. I put it on my Instagram and a load of you were mad for it. Um, in particular, the handlebars. Loads of you kept saying how good the narrow handlebars look. Um, generally, all my bikes will have at least 700, but some 800 bars on them. I do like that kind of big wide stance. Um, but I chucked these narrow Richie ones on there just to see what it looked like and everybody went, mad for it so i was like hmm there's a bike build coming so here it is this is my dynamix uh this is its kind of mock-up form so i need to strip it down which is not going to take as long as it usually does to strip down a bike first things obviously the wheels And then the seat post and take off that stem adapter. That's going back on like that. Um, and then I've been using this spray foam degreaser for ages now. Uh, not only is it fun to use, but it also works really well, like getting rid of grime and stuff. So I sprayed it inside the frame, uh, give it a good scrub in, and then uh, kind of wash it out afterwards as well. Uh, I did use this a bit on the frame as well, but uh, I don't think I've got footage of that. I then decided to take the headset apart uh, and like, kind of re-grease it and clean it. It did feel pretty good. It didn't feel that bad, but I figured it doesn't take that long, so I might as well do it. Naturally, in my line of work, a quick job turned into a long job when I unscrewed this part uh, and found the bearings loose. Uh, I naturally panicked, tightened it back up again, and then went to find a magnet or something to kind of try and collect the bearings. Uh, after all, I am the backyard mechanic, so uh, I don't have a very good place to drop bearings and find them ever again. Naturally, I went and found the magnet, and as soon as I went to unscrew it again, they dropped out. And I lost them. Forever. Luckily, I had this sat in a drawer, and it's kind of cool looking. I didn't, don't know what I bought it for originally, but um, I think it will look good on this build, so luckily it fits. But I do need to get the crown race off the old fork, so this should be interesting. This is one of those jobs that is either dead straightforward or the worst day of your life. Uh, and this one, surprisingly, ended up being a really easy, simple job. Uh, I'm just using an old um, this uh, crank bolt screwdriver is knackered already so don't get upset that I'm using it um, and then just hammering it off taking the time one side at a time and then just edging it off but yeah like that literally two hits it's dead easy I decided to give it a quick rub down with some strong degreaser just to kind of get some of that grime off of it uh, it wasn't that day to be fair but uh, it was just a little bit I felt like I just give it a bit of a clean down before we build it up While cleaning, I did notice there's some heavy rust around the chainstay, uh, so I used my uh, finger and painted on some uh, rust converter. Uh, this is a black bike, so it can go on there pretty kind of rough because it will turn black as it dries. So uh, I can bother to go and find a paintbrush, and the finger works pretty well. To get the Crown Race, the new one on the fork, I used the tried and tested, very famous technique of uh, cloth and mallet. And to get the headset in, I used, well, I used an actual tool, the correct one. I know, shock horror, right? Thank you. 
So next was to grease up the cups and grease up the bearings. Uh, but genuine question, has anybody ever actually really seriously truly noticed a difference between brands of grease? I've got about four different greases on the go and like I couldn't tell you which one's in which, which bike short term. But has anybody ever actually tested any of this kind of like long term? Like, is that something people know about? Just interested. Put it in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Yes, seriously, we're going to talk about grease. So putting the headset back on the bike with the fork, um, this the headset looks cool. I don't know what brand it is. I think it's kind of an off-brand kind of rally, probably something like that. Um, I call it Amazon, but it looks really cool. I really like it. That's it. Just, you know, I, I like it. My first thought was to actually make this single speed just to kind of keep it nice and simple. Um, but last minute I changed it to a five speed uh, freewheel on the back. Um, these old kind of uh, screw on hubs uh, need, basically the through axle needs to be dismantled mostly to be able to get to all the bits. Um, so it takes a hot minute to do it, but uh, hopefully this, the more ge gears will help this build. God, that was a rubbish sentence. I use this trick all the time where you use headset spacers on the quill adapters to kind of make them more more kind of flush and make them look like a normal stem. Um, but this is the first time I've ever done it and it almost makes it invisible. It almost makes it look like a proper or a normal stem. You know, like 118 fork. That's what I'm trying to get out here. Um, yeah, it looks sick. Well happy with this. For the derailleur, I went for this Sunrun derailleur. Uh, I think it's pretty much a Shimano. I'm pretty sure it is made by Shimano, um, but this is like new old stock. I can't remember where I got it from, but I got it well cheap and it's been sat around, uh, so it deserved the build. And um, well, I've tested it now and it does run pretty nice considering the way it looks. Um, so yeah, Sunrun. This BB looks knackered it's been in tons and tons of bikes but it's one of those bbs that i put in a lot of projects but don't actually ride it very far don't do many miles on it so it still runs perfectly smooth but just looks a bit knackered For the cranks are these specialized, I think they're S-Works cranks. Um, I got these ridiculously cheap, like 10 pounds. Uh, and this is why someone took a hammer to them to get them off the bike. Um, I'm all for using the wrong tool, but like that is definitely the wrong tool. Um, but for this build, they look fine. They still are straight. They should kind of work as cranks still. And um, yeah, they'll be fine. Getting the old chain rings off took such a long time. As you can see from this bolt, they were super crusty. Um, but I finally did. Um, I was going to polish these cranks up, but I decided I kind of liked the rattiness. So I did spray them down with some muck off and clean them up, but um, they're good to go. For the chain ring, I'm using this Work Components chain ring. Um, it is, you've already seen, you've glimpsed it then, blue. Um, it doesn't really go with the bike, but I, I think it will go with the bike if you make it go with the bike. Um, there's not any blue on it at all, I think, at the moment, but um, it's the right size, and I think it looks cool. The bolts, I'm using these black ones that have been literally sat in this bag on a shelf for months and months and months. I don't know when I got them, don't know where they come from, but I keep going, oh, I'll use those in a build. Uh, well weirdly they're not a full set so like there's more fronts than there are backs uh, or something like that so it, basically there was one short so i had to find another one which is this one which is gold which i like When putting a wheel on with uh, these sort of dropouts, I do like doing it on the floor so I can make sure it's straight. Um, these dropouts have a lot of space on one side to the side without the derailleur, so yeah, I like doing the floor. And whilst it's on the floor, you might as well do the front one like that as well. I 
put these brand new DMR plastic pedals on them, um, but they just made it look weird. I didn't like it at all, so I ripped them back off again and put these crusty DMR ones on instead. They look well ratty, but they spin super nice. This is the part of the video where it started to rain, but I was determined to finish this build. So I put up a little umbrella and tried to continue to work, but I'll warn you now, the footage isn't as clear and uh, I may have missed some bits. So off camera, I've set the limit screws on the derailleur and uh, I'm just sorting out the chain here. It's got one of those old style push through links. It's not like a quick link, um, which sometimes depending on the chain can be quite hard to get it on or get it together. So I'm using a screwdriver here to kind of like open up a little bit as it's going on. Um, but once it was on, it was fine. This not so good looking shifter is super nice because it is indexed, but if you pull this little switch, it goes to friction shifting, which I don't think I've actually done in real life on a build before. Uh, so I'm keen to do this friction shifted. At this point, the rain was getting so bad that it was kind of making me a bit miserable and more importantly, it was extremely hard to work on this bike and film it all at the same time whilst trying to keep everything dry. Um, so I kind of skipped ahead without you a little bit. So it has my favorite Tetro anodized brakes, some nice silicone grippy grips, and some cute little bar ends because retro, isn't it? I also found this in the shed whilst I was there searching through for parts. Uh, which I don't know when I bought this, when I what I plan to do with it, but it's very cool. I've got one for the back as well. Um, they're a little bit tricky to set up, surprisingly, but um, they look dope. The friction shifting was super simple to set up, as you can imagine, because you don't really need to worry too much about indexing. The main thing I've discovered is the limit screws are the most important part. As long as your limit screws are both correct at the top and the bottom, then you're kind of winning, really. That being said, you still do need to make sure the tension is good on the cable. If it's too loose, then it's just still gonna be quite sloppy when shifting. Um, the first kind of go I had was probably a little bit loose, uh, tensioned the cable up a bit more, and then, yeah, shifted well easy. The very last thing I added was this bottle cage. I splattered this for a bike a year ago or something um, and I haven't used it on anything since I think it works pretty well on this one and that's it that's another finished bike um, and I suppose you want to take a look at it right many of my build videos you know that I'm very much into my wrestling mod kind of builds Did you see that guy this is the first time I've built a bike in ages that isn't like kind of like loads of like modern parts and a retro frame and all that good stuff um, and it, it reminds me of how much fun these kind of bikes are and why I started doing this don't get me wrong I absolutely adore my resto mods and um, they're the ones I actually ride daily, right? They're super comfortable, super rigid, there's a place for them. But if you've got the space for a proper clunky, uh, not even clunky, it rides quite nice, but like a proper retro, especially with these narrow bars and the horns, like, this is sick. Although, 
it needs some knobbly tires and I want to take it through the forest. <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to add. I think I summed up perfectly then. This bike is just super, super cool. Like it really has kind of almost like relit that passion and that fire that I had about retro bikes and build them again. So expect some stonkers to come after this one. Like I'm on it at the moment. This is, this was a good build. As always, do feel free to go and check out saveoldbikes.com. Um, there's plenty of new stickers on there. Uh, there we're, we are coming to the end of some of the older designs and I'm working on some new ones. I know I've said that before, I'm getting close. Uh, so new stickers will be around the corner. So if you wanna get any of the old ones before they're gone, now's a good time for that. Um, but uh, comment below do the likey thing on the video, all that good stuff. Um, it really does help me out. It helps that more people get to know me and more people find these videos. Uh, and if you are one of those new people, welcome. Feel free to hit that button. That's for subscribing to the channel. Uh, and if you want to see more build videos, that one there is a particularly good one. 